Hey everyone, Joe Manu here. Welcome to this next video where we are going to tackle the plans page in our build of this Lotus Yoga app using our no code tool bubble um, to wrap up a few loose items from our last video. In our last video, we built out this classes page that you see here and a few items I just want to quickly overview. Um, one is that at the end of it, I'm not sure if this got mentioned or not, but when we're setting the state, make sure that your uh, parameter name is set to nav here. Um, I was playing with it a little bit and there was, I was basically clicking around QAing quality assurance stuff. Um, and, and I don't know if, if, it, if it got bumped or something, but just make sure you have that. Otherwise, this setup will not work. Um, yeah. So what else? Uh, yeah, big news in terms of this, this, the data that we're using for all of these classes. Uh, look at the, this list of data options here, classes, categories, bundles, et cetera. Um, I have this class as modified one. So what, what is, what is that? I'll, I'll share. So if you click on this little edit thing, you start, uh, adding or basically selecting how you want your view to be. Notice I just got another one of these over here. So all that is just going to delete that. All that is, is just a new view of your database. But so I've got this kind of cleaned up one that I want to share off, share out, um, and show off. So what have I done in here? Well, all of these now have a video. All of these now have uh, vertical thumb photos in addition to regular thumb photos. These regular thumb photos were what we were using here um, on the home page, but then these vertical ones are sized specifically for uh, for this page. So that's, that's a new thing. Uh, these videos are just, you know, it search Google for image to video creator. And it, there's a site that makes a 12 second clip just so we have something in there. Now I've also, uh, huh, what happened there? Refresh. Well, anyways, this, uh, This hero photo is also all of these uh, now have hero images. So we didn't have this before uh, for like for this one, for this Acre Yoga. We only had it for these ones here. And you probably noticed this little bit of lag as we're clicking this. I'll address that in a second as well. It's on my list. Um, but what I wanted to show off now that all of these we've created these vertical thumb photos, just a new field that's an image field in the database. Um, what does that mean for our design work over here? Well, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I covered this or not, but you, you probably could already guess, uh, what is it? It's it just last time we had the thumb photo and then now we have the vertical thumb photo as what it is that this, uh, the classes page is using to display these. So it's going out and getting the, the, the different style of, of thumb thumbnail photo. So that's, that's an update. Um, what else on the home page? I've gone ahead and just so again, this is so you can on your side of things, um, keep your, build updated with, with mine here. Uh, I've, I've relabeled this, this image. And I think this one as well, home row one, home rows two, three, and four. And then I gave it the workflow, the same one that the other one has where we display the data, but I also added a scroll to this one. And then you go to the class preview page. So what does that look like? Uh, and why the scroll? Well, because look here, we're scrolled down to near the bottom. And, uh, let's think that, you know, we, we want it to scroll back up to the top here. 
so it's cool. Uh, whereas before we were only working clicking from the top, so we didn't need that scroll for, for these photos. Um, what else? Uh, make sure that in your classes, repeating groups, these vertical ones are checked to keep element proportions as the pages resize. So it just keeps the proportion of that um, photo. So it doesn't look all wonky when, uh, when it's displayed on iPad or something like that. Okay. Um, let's address, let's address this photo lag. You know, like when we, when we click a photo that maybe has not been loaded, uh, that one seems to work fine. Uh, let's see if I refresh, we will get that photo light back, I believe. So that, yep, so that photo lag. So how do, what is going on there exactly? Well, what is going on is that in our workflow step, this display data into the class preview is, um, that's still working to display a new one. So what we need to have happen is in the class preview, we'll just wipe out whatever was there when this back button is hit. So when this back button is hit, you know, it goes to whatever page it was on prior. But we also want to element actions. So we had display data. Let me just show off one of these, one of these. So we have this, this is display data. We go element actions, display data. And this is what, uh, I can actually build that, but I just wanted to show where that selection is available. And we selected this class preview group and then we told it the data to give it. Now, when the back button is clicked, we're just going to reset the data of the class preview group. So what that's going to do is just going to wipe out all the data. So the the actual lag that comes in, that's funny, it will still be there from like the time that that data is getting displayed as in like data as in like new image data or whatever. Um, but it'll just be blank. So here's a bit of a lag, right? But it was blank to that lag. And Hmm, that's interesting. Still seeing a slight. Yep, yep, that was a slight. Yeah, it was showing that. Reset. Parent groups, the parent group is the class preview. Go for this. Well, I thought that that step would do it. Reset the data. That is the right one. Um, we'll have to worry about that in a later video. We'll come back. There will be maybe a cleanup one at the end of uh, this whole build, build out of the whole app. So, all right, cool. Well, today for what it, we're going to do next is we're going to work on the plans page. Now, the plans page, we haven't really looked at it too much from the, the UI uh, overview. And our first step here is going to be taking a look 
at what, what exactly is it that we're trying to build. Um, this one has quite a bit to it. So let's take a look. Okay, yeah, yeah, here we are. All right, so here we are on the plans page. And we've got two options. We've got the plans themselves up top and the joined. And I think this is kind of just the first view clicks back and forth between the two to just show what's going on. So when someone is not in a yoga plan yet, they will not have anything shown here. They will just default to the plans tab where they can peruse and find a plan to join. Um, what happens if they click into a plan? We'll find out in a moment. So we get a little bit different, like similar to our class preview page, where we click deeper, you know, one level deeper into uh, something. This is very similar to that. We can probably use those same hero images We'll just make it shorter and we'll kind of chop off the bottom part so we won't have that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a diagonal uh, part, this diagonal here coming down. We'll just have this top part. So that's, we'll do, we'll do that. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. One week starter program. There's a join program button. There's like a, there's some info about this and what else? Okay. So that, this is what happens if you click join program, you are taken to a calendar view. We will not be building this because we're not going to integrate with the, see, this is integrated with the iOS. You can tell by the design of this pop-up that you see it's saying please allow access to the calendar to iOS settings so um, this is something that um, is a nice to have feature where it could be added to someone's calendar it's not you know required and we'll see about it in the full official course for for this um, there is a way to integrate with the calendars using a sp specific tool that uh, costs a, uh, a little extra, uh, but I think it's worth it because it gives a lot of native type of app features. Um, you, you, so what I'm saying is that uh, it's above and beyond bubbles um, out of the box capabilities. So cool. Um, so we won't bother with the particulars. I was just noting in this video that we see here, I was just noting all of the functionality of this app. Um, and like I said, that calendar one, what we'll have is that when someone is joined here, we have day one, day two, day three, and we'll just have it so that uh, that's it. You know, like when you join a program, here are the classes that you can take for day one, day two, day three. And and we'll just kind of have it labeled out or laid out and displayed so that people can see, um, oh, yeah, you know, I'm on day two or whatever. And with these little check boxes um, or check marks, you know, we can find a way to, after someone has completed a course, that they, um, these are grayed out. That is a feature, whether when I'm saying that, that it's grayed out, we'll see if we get there. Um, we got a long road ahead. There's a lot of screens, a lot of stuff going on on this plans page. And I want to make sure that, you know, as you are investing your time in this course, that we're getting, let's say, 80 to 90 percent of functionality. We're not uh, because to get that last 10% of functionality, if that takes 50% of the time that it's taking for everything else, that's not, you know, the juice is not worth the squeeze as it were. So, um, what else, what else we got going on here? Uh, I think that little button, this little three dotted button, when you click it, it says, do you want to update this program? 
So that is, I don't think we're going to build that. Uh, basically, um, from a data standpoint, I'm not going to go there yet. We'll, we'll recap at the end. Like, what data stuff do we need to do? Um, but we can say that somehow we need to know if the person is signed up or not to a program and then remove. I think we'll, I'll make this this three dot button and I'll just say, uh, would you like to remove this program? And uh, because we're going to make it so that someone can only join one program at a time. It's just how it's going to be. Um, so back here on this, do you want to join a yoga program? We got this floating thing up top. So this plans joined. Uh, that'll be something that we'll want to consider how to do. What else? When we click join a program, what do we see? We see stuff pretty similar to what we've seen before. We've got these vertical. Um, so we can just reuse what we already have. And that's it. That's, uh, you know, not here we're on the library page. So that uh, takes us to the end. So let me jump back to here. Okay, so let's talk about data for a second. What type of data are we going to need? We're going to need to know if, if a person is, if they have not joined any program. So, right, let's see, it was back, back here when, when we we're first looking at this plans page. Here's the plans. Here's the join. You haven't joined a program yet. How does it know that? There's some kind of conditional, right? So the, the user, the person, what is, what is it that is joined to the program? It's the, it's the person who is using the app. So we haven't dealt a ton, uh, I think, at all with a, with a user as a data type yet, but we'll take a look at that. And so if a user has joined a program or not, that's a, that's a piece of data that we want to know about. Um, these plans, those are data. Do we create a new data type or can we use something that already exists? Well, I think we could just use a bundle and assign some classes to a bundle and give those, give the bundles uh, an image to be associated with them and just say, hey, go out and get bundles number X, Y, Z, or seven, eight, nine, or whatever, and display those in this repeating group, something that we've seen a lot of. And yeah, so we need some kind of state that controls uh, or a piece of information that controls if they're joined the plan for the bundles, what else? I think that might be it. I think so. Let's see this next screen. It looks like we could give a description to the plan or program, which if we're going to call bundle, uh, I'm just going to go with that, with the bundles. So I'm going to go over to the bundles. Bundles have a title already. I'm going to give the bundles a description. Now notice on our homepage, they don't need a description for the bundles. That bundle was just saying, hey, these are in this row. These are in the what's new thing. Um, so it's like we can have these things and they don't necessarily need to be used. So this is a, uh, this is a bundle home photo. It's not a thumb photo. It's a, it's one of these photos. It's just, it's just a photo. <laughs> so yes, this is the bundle photo. Um, what do we have for bundle photos? So I have a couple of these pre-made. Let's take a look. Um, before we do that, we're going to create 
the what I said the the user state if the user is subscribed to a program yet a plan and this uh, yours will look slightly different but every every bubble install comes with a user again I have a couple other apps running on this same installation um, uh, because it's a paid one and I guess I could create a new account with a new one but uh, just hadn't so you don't need to worry about any of these fields they're all stuff that's existing for uh, other things what we need to do is that we need we need to know if a user so we're gonna say this is related to our yoga app so we'll give it yoga this is a field name of um, yoga plan joined. so imagine like imagine uh, if you've used if you've used an app like Airbnb or if you've used an app um, like Instagram. <laughs> In Airbnb, they have favorites, so you can just favorite some things, and then it creates a list of them. Or it just you know it associates those things that you've you've done with you, your account. Or in Instagram, you can like bookmark. Uh, I, I think that's what it is or a save for later type of thing so you're taking this and you're adding it to to uh to a field and so what we're doing is we're taking a plan or a yoga program we're subscribing to it and then we're adding it here so we could say uh yeah i think a text is fine because we'll just use the title of the plan to know which one we're subscribed to and then we could say is it empty or is it not empty if this field is empty then uh, we know to display this. You haven't joined a program yet. So cool. All right. Yoga plan joined. So back over here, I want to create a new entry for a bum bundle five. We're going to call this, see what I have here. Um, the beginner yoga plan description will be two weeks 14 classes that would give them all the same description let's say this one is one week and it will be uh, we'll do our vinyasa and our beach and there are seven uh, seven classes for that last list uh, we want Sure, further vinyasa. Um, what do we have? Further vinyasa flowing into the splits. More out. Sanas. And then we'll put our beach ones. Into this plan for beginners. Beach. Being at a beach doing some yoga sounds pretty nice right now. Okay, so beginners. If we just take a look at that image, here it is. All right, bundle number five looks good. Create. So let's go ahead and
Hmm, what happened? Did not seem to want to create. Let's see if it was just like some kind of error. Or some kind of bug. Okay, good. It did create. So I know not to create it again. I know to create. Um, the The advanced plan. And these ones, because it's advanced, we're going with uh, the acro yoga ones. And the go vertical ones. So you can see how I wanted to, we could have just only done this as like, like go vertical or just the acro yoga for the, um, and we could have done it as we were already categorized these, but I wanted to show what it would be like to have a bigger, a bigger plan. Um, because that would actually be what would be done if um, this was a, a real, you know, 21 day or 30 day type of setup for a real yoga class. Great. Okay. Bundle five, six, seven. Now we're just going to do what do we got? Each in Asanas. So beach. So we're just kind of reusing these classes to create another title yoga at the beach. One week, four classes. And our last one, bundle eight. Uh, the vinyasa going into the splits and more about asanas. Week. Three classes. Title. Um, vinyasa. What is this one? Oh, asanas. Essential asanas yoga plan. Cool. All right. So got that set up. Now let's go tackle this joined plans menu item. Um, I noticed that they do not have the logo on this page. It would seem to me it would make sense to keep that there, but what do I know? So we're going to plop a group down and we're going to call this group. Oh no, we already have one. We're going to go up to our group plans because that one's already connected to our menu. And we're going to take away the color. Bring it to the edge and bring it, bring it down.
Okay. Um, make it look good on iPads. Collapse this element height when hidden. Because that's just uh, kind of how we roll for all these. The type of content, we don't know yet. Um, but let's get let's get a floating group. Yeah, let's get a floating group here. Um, kind of just guesstimating here. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's exactly the view I want. Where it is. Uh, that looks like 60 pixels maybe. Or... So we want this to be... 0, 0, 320. Um, I do not want it to be fixed with. I do want it to be visible on the page load. Floating group tab menu. That's what we'll call it. We want an 80. I think so. Um... What happens if I look at this? If I put the um, if I were to put the logo there, honestly, I like it better. So I'm going to do that. And it looks like this floating menu found its way outside of the plans group. Are we in it now? I wonder if it's because it's floating Um, cut, paste, hmm, let me try this, let me try this again. I'll make this a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And turn on the plans group. Okay, cool, cool. Just checking that this floating tab is always going to be above the groups. So what do I want to have happen with this floating tab? I want it to have the same conditionals to be shown because I don't, I don't want it showing on the other pages. I want it only showing on this. Um, plans floating group. Not visible on page load. It is not fixed width. It has a height of 80. And I want to see, probably try and get it uh, about the same, get, get some, some of the spacing, some of the layout the same as the last page we were on, which is the classes page. So just want to take a look at this thing. It is you know, this thing. It is starting at 60. It is 30 high, so it goes to 90. So that is cool. I will go to 90 
on this one as well. Start at zero. And we had what am I going to use for these? Uh, just a button. Um, I want to I want to copy a lot of things that uh, have already been used when whenever possible because I think it's easier right like actually this group heading will probably copy over at some point this repeating group is this button I want to copy that and I want to drop it into paste here And I want to get some spacing stuff right. So this uh, clear expression, this is just straight up. What is this button? This button is for the um, join. How tall is this? It's 25. Starting at 20, width of 150. Um, let's see. If I want, we have a total width of 320. I want, so 280 minus the padding on the sides. The 280, 260, if I give 20 in between each of those, half of 260 is 130. So we want this to be 130. And then that gives, brings us out to, with this 20, I think I said that right, whatever, I'm just going to plop this down here. I guess this would go, yeah, 170. And that lines up on the right, so that looks good too. Okay, so... Yeah, so what conditional do we want here? Well, we want this is ends, ends and joined. And this has no, no background if uh, no background and white text if it's not joined. And this has a background of this color. And I think white text as well. Right? Yes. Not bold. And I want to give these maybe give them fifteen. Hi, so that ensures that we have a full kind of like circleish thing across them, which is looks with the, what, about what they have. Joined, blends. Okay, so what types of conditionals? Well, we want to reference the current user's yoga plan joined is if it is empty, This element is, is visible. 
If it is empty, this element is visible. Or um, okay, we're going to create a When, when someone browses or goes to this lands page, this is what I'm going to choose to have it happen. I'm going to set a state uh, on the lands group of the state is just a toggle. And I get the menu toggle here because it's just one or the other. So it's easy, whereas that other one, I wanted to set it as like the category because it had a bunch of different options. Whereas this state, um, the text is fine. And we're gonna set it as plans value. Okay, I see, I could have just, uh, I don't know, so this is tied to the mobile course, and I'm tying this one to the plans group. Okay, cool. So, uh, the conditional that I want to have, or, no, um, plans groups, menu toggle, is, plans. I think that's what I want. We'll come back to this, but to describe what it is that I want is I want it like when somebody comes to this page, I want, uh, I want this plans to show Especially if there's nothing in the joined one, that'd be silly to have the joined one joined. But I'm trying to think if this is redundant because I think I only want the second part. And it'll just always show the plans first. All right, sorry, had not, uh, had not totally thought this one. And uh, I mean, we're you're getting to see um, the thought process live here. So when this is um, yeah, actually, I'm not even going to worry about the this thing being empty or not. If somebody's joined a plan or not, that actually should show that should control. Nope, not that. this so this this message that gets displayed that should show up only when this is empty so we actually just want to work with and groups menu toggle is ends is joined. So when when this one is clicked, we're going to set the state of this to joined. So if one clicks this joined, then this plans group is joined this element well this element is always visible and this element is always visible what we want to have happen 
if you want to change the background color, so when this, we want the background color to be this. When is not plans, we want, yeah, okay, cool. So we want the background color. Well, it doesn't matter. We can just say it. it's completely transparent. And that's it. Cool. And then for this one, That's not important. The font color will always be that. That's not important. We want the background color. Um, that's odd. Because we could get a background color here. Well, let's see. Try it again. <laughs> All right, fine. Background style. Black color. Okay. Okay, sure, sure, sure. We had to give that, uh, we had to define, we had to go from this background style of none to flat color, then to this background color. Whereas this one, the appearance already starts with the background style. So that was the difference. Little things to know. Cool. So when this joined is, then, then we have all this stuff. When... I actually like that better is joined when it is plans sorry when this one well okay when this one is joined do this when this one is planned background style is none Okay, cool, cool. So I'm showing actually two things, two ways. It is different on, on them, on both of them. Uh, this background style is none, and this background style just takes the transparency down to zero. So showing two ways to do the, accomplish the exact same thing. Let's see what we got over here now. So this thing should show when the URL is plans. And, okay, we do not have a, we have a workflow happening here. We also need this workflow to happen here. And we need the value to be and set the same as Plans, yeah, capital P. How does our how does that look? 
overall. Oh, interesting. Okay, so when it bounces back over. Now we could add a thing that when we click out of this plans and we click on the library or something else that see that little bounce over from join the, of the pink background because it took a moment for that workflow to reset it back over to plans. I'm trying to think, do we even want to have uh, that workflow happen. Good enough for now. Okay, so moving on. What else do we want to have happen? When uh, when joined is, is, is hit, we want a group to show up. And let's see. Are these 30 tall? I want these to be 30. And so that brings it there. And then we will put the spacing there. And What do we want to have happen for the joined? In the joined, we want, when someone is joined to a plan and they're subscribed to it, see if we can find what that, it looks like this. Right here. So, what do we have? We have the we have the plans title, we have this button, and we have this repeating group. So let's go back up to So that's just that part. Let's get into our plans group. Okay. This group is going to be group join. We're going to drop in a, uh, a piece of text. That text is going to be and title. We joined and title. We're going to make it like 20. 18 uh, yeah let's give it zero 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 uh, 280 and 30 is fine and we want the dynamic piece of data to be Um, we want it to be whatever plan that the, the person has joined. So we want the current users yoga plan joined and tell us what that plan is, is what we're looking to have happen here. Um, okay. and make that text quite white bold okay that should be good enough if there's something that it's that the plan's name is longer than that we'll figure that out we'll cross that bridge when we come to it um we've got a button Right now, there is no 
um, plan joined by a user. In fact, there's there isn't even a user, um, but I think in the test environment we should we should be okay to uh, add some stuff. We'll get that figured in a second. What we want to do next is we want to um, Uh, maybe we want to back off and we actually want to have somebody join a program before we build out the thing that shows what they've joined. So that's cool. So we'll just, we'll take this. We will copy paste and bring this up. So what are we looking at under normal circumstances for this. Do you want to join a yoga program? Looks like that's on two lines, so just bring this down. Touch. Some work. We are rocking and rolling today. Do you want to join a yoga plan? Maybe if it's close to my house. Choose one of the programs below. Okay, so we can keep this at 30. And then drop another piece of text. That is the sound of text dropping. 30, zero. Uh, 32. It's going to be smaller, 20, 280. This text. It's going to be white. It's going to be 14. Um, and it's going to say so this text is man's title. This text is man's subtitle. Does it say choose? Choose one of the programs below. Choose one of the Okay, cool. Give it a little bit of more spacing. Boy, the super solid white looks so bright. Let's back it out. Touch. Wait, I like the D1, D1 was pretty good. Um, D1, D1, D1. Okay. This, we're going to give it the conditional. That this one has. Copy. This is group and so show this when uh, oh no it's plans and then we're going to just real quickly pop over to this one when it's joined show that one and then take off the show it when it's um, you know what I want slightly brighter? E1. Okay. All right. Let's, yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, we 
We want a really big one, apparently. If we want it to exactly match what they have. Wait, that was odd. Let me refresh this. Well, let me refresh it. I, I see why I didn't do that, because that state had not been set yet. But is there ever a moment where we would actually show up on the plans page without having navigated to it pre previously through this menu button? I don't think so. So if we click this, do you want to join a yoga plan? I do want it to be massive. I'm going to change that. I want this one to be slightly bigger as well. I want this one to be 36, 24. All right. So um, I think what we're going to do for this video is, there we go, nice, uh, thicker font. What we're going to do for this video is we're going to finish off the, just listing out these plans here. And then we're going to come back in a next video and we'll, we'll work on the, the joined page and we'll split it up like that. And then um, in a video after that, we'll work on, you know, what happens when you click into the plans uh, and, and, you know, finishing off. It's, it's similar to work we've already done before. Do you want to join a yoga plan? That's what's up. We need some letter spacing. Maybe we do need this to be like 28. Yeah, yeah, so we'll break this up into three videos. So let's uh let's get let's get a repeating group onto this plans page. Do you want to join a yoga plan? Do you want to join a yoga program? Um this is more like 1.2, maybe. All right, that letter spacing is not that cool. Either was my idea to make this less bright. Do you want to join a yoga program? Their fonts are way cooler. Work on that at a different time, though. Do you want to join a yoga program? What if I can get away with a 0 0.5 here? Take that. Oh. I think that looks good. Could have a touch more space above and below it. So I'll bring this down to here. You know, I'm just refreshing this a million times, but uh, I think, think we got something that uh, looks pretty good. Spacing is one of those things in design that uh, designers do it really well, and us non-designers, well, just flailing. So, uh, yeah, that's the deal. All right, grab a repeating group, and... Bring it over to zero. I think that, I think, I think, I think, I think. Well, okay, so in the past, in the past, um, I've been designing these one by one, and then I let the I let the amount of data in the database populate and pull them down. 
I'm trying to decide whether to continue doing that or just because I know there's four of them, I can just say, hey, put in the full list of four of them and uh, I think I'll go with the original plan. So, the reason why I was thinking just put a full list is because then there's, there's like zero surprises on how things end up looking from a design standpoint. But so we want this content to be bundles. And the data source is do a search for some bundles. Oh, right. Ah. And where those bundle numbers are greater than or equal to five. Because we know in our database we want these. Lots of ways to do this, folks. Um, you know, it could be could be something different. Um, all I want is an image in here. That's it. That's all I've ever wanted. Um, okay. Two eighty is what I want here. And what is this image? This is the ends photo. And I want to take the current cells photo. Now, what do I have for the size of these images? Here's a way to find find it. Just if you're ever curious, go to C, get it here. Go, oh, oh wait, yeah, I already have it. So these are 280 by 106 in this uh, little, the parentheses here. So 280 by 106. So if I go back to the designer and I take a look at this 106 280 um, and I want to give the roundness maybe 10 Let's see what we get Cool. So there's those four things. Um, you know, I think I wanted this, I want this to stretch out. Yeah, I do. I want that to. I want this to be to stretch to the edges, because then I th uh, the the responsiveness is taken over by this outer group, and it, it transfers to this one, and then these ones are pretty good as they are. Um, so I think I have both the. Repeating group. No, it's B one hundred six, and the plans photo is one hundred six. I don't think that's exactly what I want, but because oh yeah, gotta make it show up because then there's no space. But I just wanted to see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. So we need to do something where the. For this floating menu. Okay. 
conditional when current page scrolling position is greater than or equal to what is this thing like 90 then the background style the black color and that background color is um, whatever this is. Ta da! Let's try that again. Okay. So we're here. Interesting. Oh, it's waiting until when? This point. All right, so we actually want that to be more like, I don't know, something less. And we want, where does this thing start? 115. We want this floating thing to be 115 tall. No. Let's try 50. I don't know why it didn't work when it was 90. Oh, actually, okay, no, it's the it's the difference between the, it was waiting until, I know that it's 90 high, but uh, you want it to, it moves into the other stuff because the difference between the bottom of this and the top of this is like 30 pixels. So actually, right, so it's the, it's the, it's the bottom edge of this pink one and the top edge of this text. It's the difference between those is the scroll height value that we would want. Actually, I think we could just give that background and not even worry about a scroll height. We just give it that background. And it always has that background. All right, whatever. It looks uh, looks decent. I would like it to be less tall and. Yeah, I think we just uh, I don't know. We don't need this scroll thing. I'm going to leave it in there because uh, I don't know. Let me think about this. I kind of want to, I think it looks cool when it changes to that. But all right, let's move on. Let's get down to this repeating group. This repeating group itself, it needs to be whatever distance we put at the bottom. So if we want 20 pixels between each of these, then if we put it like that, uh, I kind of want 30. We'll see what we got. So this should, uh, this should wrap it up here for this today's video for this video segment. Yeah. So do you want to join a yoga program? Uh, goodness, that is, are those fixed with, I don't even know, but we got that nice, uh, menu thing working today. 
we've got a repeating group with some of these plans to be joined. This elements visible upon page load. I wonder. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this repeating group 320. So it also I think will take the responsiveness of uh, the repeating group should also take the responsiveness of the outer groups. And then yeah, I believe that's uh, and then in those this image has some padding or whatever, and if it gets really wide, I wonder, I do want the image to, all right, keep the proportions. And, but that, so like if we go to iPad, I'm just curious, like how big that uh, image gets, and then Then we'll, then we'll uh, call, call it good for this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay. Right, so there was something. There was something that felt off. Because look at that. The, the images resize nicely on the different phone sizes. That's what I was looking for. Now, it doesn't look so fuzzy. Plus, if we go on an iPad... Do you want to join a yoga program? Yeah, see, that looks pretty good. You know, I mean, uh, it's 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 definitely like doable, workable. You could you could put a nap out there in the world with with this. So, uh, last thing that we'll do. So I just want to bring this up to about here. Yep. Um, as per usual, drop in a drop in a group to dampen the spacing out a little bit. Give that a center. Bring it down to the bottom. Bring it up to even for this line here. This is not visible. Collapse it. Call it the group collapser. And then this should do it. So uh, if you are following along in your bubble builder, pat yourself on the back for getting yeah check that nice really nice spacing pat yourself on the back for getting to this point we are cruising through this stuff uh thank you for hanging with and as always look forward to seeing you in the next video